morning everybody and it is morning it's fairly early I've already fed the animals and I've been out to the garden and I picked poke salad I've already got it washed and I looked over it it's real good make sure it's okay and it is I've got high hopes for three or four quart, uh, pints of this but high hopes don't mean nothing until you actually wilt this stuff down Here's my jars. I've got them in my canner already, getting hot. This pork puck salad really requires at least two cooks. It means cook it twice. I will bring this to a simmer, get it nicely wilted, turn it off, and drain it. Then I will can it in water with a little bit of salt in my pint jars. That will provide both, both times of cooking the greens. That's to get out some toxins that, I don't know if they'll kill you, but it sure will give you stomach issues. So, I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm ready to strain the greens. They're well wilted. Strain them, strain them out of that water. Come here, you. They're steaming hot. I'm going to rinse them and then put them back in this pan about half filled with water, maybe a little more, so I have plenty of juice to put in with them when I can them. Let me get them rinsed. Excuse me. I rinse these is because this is pokeweed and it needs a rinse to get those extra toxins out of it. Okay, that's good right there. Now, I'm going to put them back over. Adjusting. I'm here by myself, so I don't have anybody here to move the camera for me. All right, put them back in this pan over here. Bring them to a nice boil again. you back when I start putting that the puck salad into the jars. I know you can't see it over there very well. I'm going to bring you back and I'll have the the board up here where you can see better. I hope the wind coming through the window doesn't bother the sound too much but as usual I've got uh, a paper towel soaked in vinegar and this is the bowl that I'll set my jar in when I'm filling it. This little cup is just uh, just to hold my funnel and my chopsticks that I'm going to debubble with. Got my my jar lifter. Over here I've got my rings and my lids. When I get ready to can this, I will put the pot of greens here and use a. Oh, I forgot to get this down, didn't I? Use my my uh, ladle get the juices out but I'm just going to mostly lift the greens out with a pair of tongs. Any greens that are left in there I can get out with this little tool. Okay, be right back. Okay, my uh, 
greens are as wilted as I want them to be. I don't want them to fully collapse because that can uh, make them be too dense in the jars. I've got four pint jars ready. I hope that's all I need. I kind of think it will be. So let me get things around. I'll turn the heat back up on the canner. Get these jars good and hot. Pour the water back into the canner. I want the, all the water to stay in there. Put on a funnel. Get my salt. Get my salt over here. I'm only going to want a half a teaspoon of salt in each. Sorry about kicking the thing. In each uh, jar. So I will get get my tongs. Start putting greens down. You see, I didn't chop them or shred them or anything. I really just want whole big pieces in there because they'll break down a little further when I get ready to prepare them later on. You can push them down a little. It's not a lot. I'll show you one jar getting it filled. And then I will bring you back when I get them all in the canner. Now we can sit and eat a pint of these with some cornbread and some pepper sauce or hot sauce and some pinto beans. Put a little bacon in here when I get ready to cook them or some bacon grease. I don't want to can them. I don't want to can them with the meat in there. Okay. Okay, I just realized I didn't wipe the rim of that first jar. But I did get it back out and wipe the rim and put it back in the canner. Just letting you know, I didn't really forget. I just forgot for a minute. Okay, my last jar. I only have about, this is the fourth jar. I only have about a half a jar of the greens. So, I'm going to put the salt in there. So, what I'm going to do is fill it up with some chopped onion. It's not going to hurt a thing. It might be a real good taste change. Just going to coarse chop it. Uh, onion usually only processes for 40 minutes, and so that's not going to be a problem with these greens because the processing time on pints of greens is 70 minutes. So the onions will have plenty of time to be safe. A bit more in there. I just don't want to process a half a jar of greens with a lot of liquid and I don't have any half pint jars left. I've used them all for jam and jelly and for uh, uh, sugar pod peas. I'll tell you there's no canning directions for sugar pod peas because the uh, thought is that they turn out better frozen because they stay crisp. I don't have a freezer. So, I have to can them. I can them uh, for the time for regular English or sweet green peas. And that would be 40 minutes because uh, green beans time is 25 minutes a pint or half a pint. Like that, I think that might do it. Now, put the cooking water in there. One inch headspace. Two bubble. Anyway, this will make a, a pretty nice side dish for something with the greens and the onions together. Wipe the rim. Put on a lid and a ring. Oh, there you go. Put it in the can. Okay. Got four pints in the can, or I'll be right back. 
As you can see, I'm using my smaller, I haven't used this canner in a while because I usually can larger batches. This is considered an 8 quart, in other words it holds 8 quarts of liquid. It will hold 4 quart jars upright and it has a really good heat up and cool down time. It takes about 45 minutes to cool down which is about like all my other canners, my bigger canners. And the heat up time is also about oh, 30 minutes. So this is supposed to be a Miromatic and it's supposed to automatically vent out of one of the handles. I don't remember which one right now. I think it's that one. Anyway, it's supposed to automatically vent with the weight on. Well, now they're saying, and I do it, to vent it, make sure it vents for 10 minutes out of this stem and then uh, put the weight on there and build the pressure. Let's see if I can get a little better look at that. This little guy was my mother's, and I've done a lot of pressure cooking in it lately. But and I do that because it takes less time. It's got this little. Let me see this. Oh, there's the wind. Yay! Feels good. Anyway, it's got this little disc type weight, and I use 10 pounds of pressure, which is this this part right here that goes over the stem and it jiggles two or three times a minute. It's pretty loud. I like it though because I can really keep track of it without staring at a gauge. Uh, the newer Miro, this is Miromatic. The newer Miro canners I think come with three three separate weights they all, and they're kind of a bell shape that goes on there. But the principle is the same. They jiggle three or four times a minute for the pressure for your elevation. Mine happens to be 10 pounds. Now my mother canned with this for quite a while. I think she got it in the middle 60s maybe, something like that. She canned a lot with it. And then uh, a few years ago she gave it to me because she had quit canning. She's 95 now. She stopped canning but she gave it to me and in the interim I had also bought the other two bigger canners. Anyway, I will bring you back when it's venting and show you that. And then I'll bring you back when I uh, put the weight on there and show you how it builds pressure. This is a little different operation than, than my big canner. As you can see, it's beginning to vent. A little bit of bubbles or water drops coming out the top. It's starting to vent. It will soon get a full stream of steam, which it's beginning to get now. And I will set this timer for 10 minutes as soon as I see a full stream of steam coming out of there. I'll probably see some coming out from under one of the handles too. I'm going to ignore that. All I want to see is 10 minutes of steam out of that vent pipe. Okay, we've got st a steady stream of steam coming out. So I'm going to set this for 10 minutes. Set it right down here on my board. When that goes off, I'll bring you back. I just want to show you something real fast. You can see we're getting some venting from under this handle. And when the when I'm through and I take this lid off, I'll show you why. But there is a little lever under there that pushes a button up that that locks the handle in place and seals the canner. Uh, these were designed to vent on their own. It takes about between five and seven minutes to vent this canner. But with this, you get a full ten minutes vent vent venting on it. You get all the air out for for sure. Uh, if I had left the weight on here, after about five to seven minutes, this would this handle would. Uh, it's kind of a lever. It will pop down and it locks the handle in place. Uh, the lid in place. You can't take it off until the pressure is released. And it would lock the steam in and then begin jiggling. But I'm going to do this the proper way. I'm doing the full 10 minute vent out that pipe. Okay, the time is up. The chicken uh, alarm rang. So. Let me get over here.
Oh, there's a pig out. Good grief. And get over here. Put this on here. In a few minutes, I might have to tap this to get it to come up. But, uh, I might have to turn it all off and you'll get that big. Can you see him out there? I don't know. That one always gets out. He can get out of any place. You see him? He's not, he doesn't eat the garden, but he's eating weeds. And I don't care, except for, I don't need him out. Gosh dang it. I just got to turn this off and start it over again. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, as I mentioned a little while ago, let me move this out of my way. Oh. <laughs> <I'm> hot. <coughs> Excuse me. I was going to show you how the inside of this scanner lid looks. This is where the vent pipe is, and you have to check that every once in a while. Make sure it's cleaned out. This part is a uh, overpressure plug. You can see it right here. If it gets uh, past safe canning temperatures, it will melt right out of there. I'm leaving a, a no because my son accidentally left this lid sitting on a stove burner one day at our other place and it burned that out and burned this up. That little rubber ring. You can still see some evidence right here of where the old one melted out. Anyway, but what I really want to show you is this part. It's a little lock. When it's in this position, it locks into the handle on the canner right right here. And you can't open it. So, uh, and this goes up and down. So let me, can you see that going up and down? Well, that would be up if, if, the, can, if the lid was on the canner. If this is in the lock position. This is up and it's locking the steam in. And this is unlocked. It will vent out underneath there. And when I first got this canner from Mom, I replaced uh, the uh, gasket and this assembly because it was pretty stiff. Uh, then I had to turn around after my son melted that part out and replace a hot, some other stuff again. So, but it's it's all good. It's good now. It's fine. No problem with it. But anyway, I just want to show you that they used to have you vent for say, about five or seven minutes using this. You can't see it on the lid side on the top. It's underneath this handle, and the steam would come out from under the handle. I don't know if you can tell. Anyway, then uh, then it would automatically, after about seven minutes, it would pop like like that and lock into place, and the uh, counter lid will be locked on. Now it will still do that, but I now vent through the vent pipe, which is right there. So there you have it. And there are a lot of these old Miramatics around. Most of them are a lot bigger than this. This is one of the smaller ones, and it was probably the only one Mama could afford to buy when she bought that. But she did use it, and I've used it, and it's really a pretty nice canner, I think. Uh, and it works for small batches. I can, I can get five ball jar or six ball jars in the in the canner, but maybe seven, but. I can always get I can only get one less of the golden harvest and I think it's because they're fat. They're wider across the middle than ball jars are. So but it will hold four quart jars, either regular mouth or wide mouth. And it meets all the specifications of a safe canner. Got him put back up. They'll come to feed, so that's a good thing. But now, I have to start this all over again, y'all. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, once again, the wait is on, and I hope I don't look out the window and see another pig running around in the back. Or out in front. Anyway, I'll let this, uh, I'll see if this will pop itself up. Sometimes you can tap it and loosen it where it'll pop up. It's old. 
like me. Its joints are stiff like mine. So it sometimes needs a little encouragement. I'll be back when the jiggler starts uh, jiggling. Okay, it started jiggling. I'm going to turn it down. It's going a little too fast. So I don't want to lose all of its water. I just want it to go two or three times a minute. Okay. I turn it down. It takes a minute for it to calm down. That's two minutes. You're probably wondering why I've got stuff in the window. Well, I'm trying to block some of the wind off of this canner so it doesn't fluctuate too much. But now that it's reached temperature and pressure, I'm going to set my timer. This is a 70 minute process and the most this timer can do is an hour to start with. So there she is, set at an hour. Set it right over here. <clears throat> when the timer goes off, I'll add another 10 minutes. I'll be back. I just want to show you what it looks like when it's jiggling correctly. It'll jiggle four or five seconds and stop. And start again. Then it'll stop. And it'll start again. So you see there, that's what it should look like and sound like when it's correctly set. All right, my timer went off. I set it for 45 minutes after the time was up for the processing. So now I'm going to take the weight off. Should be, yeah, it's completely, the pressure is completely gone. Take the lid off. Always take it off facing away from you so that the steam doesn't get you. I'm going to lay it right over here. Short of space today. Start taking my jars of hook salad out. Looks like I might have lost some liquid or something in them. They're still, if they're still over half left, then it's golden. It's my, oops, this one's floating. I guess I didn't have it packed good enough. You know, nothing's ever perfect. Here's the one with the onions in it. Okay. Four pints of poke salad, one with onions. I'll let these sit there. Well, I may wind up having to move them after a while when I get over there or somewhere when I finish washing dishes or when I get ready to wash dishes. I have to move them very carefully so that I don't mess up the seals on them because they look like they've all sealed down but I want to show you these are the half pints this is a half pint of the sugar pod peas I think I've got eight of these little half pints now and then one pint that's got onions in it because I needed to fill it up this is what happens when this is the peas were hot packed the onions were raw packed, so you can see they collapsed, and it looks like I've got too much headspace, but that headspace was right up there where it was supposed to be when I packed them, so that's all right. Anyway, I think I've got eight half pints now of the sugar pod peas. By tomorrow, there'll be some more to pick.